Hi everybody. September 1. September 1, 2019. Okay. Well, it's very clear now. We are living idiocracy permanently. This is not going to reverse itself. And if you are someone like me that likes to make sense of the world in which you live in, you might be finding that you're a little irritated with the information that is communicated to us, like this guy, Donald Trump, the President of the United States, who gets hurricane reports from the top, top meteorologists in the world, the top, the experts on hurricanes. He tweeted this this morning, 10.51 a.m., in addition to Florida, South Carolina, North Carolina, Georgia, and Alabama will most likely be hit in parentheses much. Who does that? So is that, well, harder, but it could be much harder than anticipated. Looking like one of the largest hurricanes ever, already category five. Be careful, God bless everyone. Oh my God, how is it that we still have people who actually support this guy? Oh, well, he is, he has so clearly revealed his face early on when he came into office, just like Obama, early on when he came into office, the lying, the, um, the crazy, crazy stuff that this guy says. Okay. Maybe, I don't know. Um, are they just dimwits? Are they uh, just putting out information? What, I don't know, I'll include Alabama. The president gets reports, Alabama. Well, is it to scare the shit out of people now in Alabama because the South Carolina, North Carolina coast, well, we knew that. Uh, what was it, uh, late in the afternoon? Oh, wow, Hurricane Dorian. I guess it's not going to be hitting Florida. It's just going to be traveling up the coast to hit uh, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina. Well, we don't know. We don't know what's going on with Dorian. But this guy comes out and tweets this. Oh, my God. Wow. You know, if you are someone who's reality-based and, yeah, you don't have an option, that's just where you are. You, you can't, you know, create these delusions in your mind, even if you want to, because, wow, wouldn't I like to just have a couple of comfortable days, but you don't have that. Maybe it's genetics. I don't know. But you just don't have that ability. Whew. Well, we're, we're, uh, I don't know what to make of this life. You know, sometimes I have this vision of me just throwing up my arms going, fuck it, I don't give a shit anymore. But I do. That's not possible to just flip the switch. Ah, uh, well, no, Trump. Alabama, I think, is going to be okay. Uh, but hey, I understand. You're the president of the United States. And you get these reports from the top experts. But, 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 but what? But, 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 that's all you can say, Hurricane Center. There is an increasing likelihood of strong winds and dangerous storm surge along the coast of Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina. Where's Alabama? No Alabama. Okay, well, yeah, but the hurricane, the National Hurricane Center is now putting out category five, a category five, catastrophic category five, makes landfall on Elbow K. It, 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 it's in the Bahamas, apparently it's gonna stall there. Uh, stall, we have storms that stall now. Um, here, let's see, the advisories for the Atlantic on Hurricane Dorian. 
Yeah, catastrophic five. Okay. Well, they just updated because before this catastrophic category five, they said that it was the largest. Okay. Do you recall, was it last year or two years ago when Trump was saying, what was that hurricane? I can't even remember the name that hit South Carolina, North Carolina, and stalled, flooding out areas along the coast. Whatever the hell the name was, who cares? It doesn't matter. He said it was the largest. He said it was going to be the most. Th th this is how this guy talks, okay? Uh, everything's big. Nothing is reality. You want to hear the... <laughs> USA Today, the National Hurricane Center provides an update on Hurricane Dorian live. Okay, it's now a Category 5. I do have to increase the volume on this video. Let's hear what this guy has to say. Remember, we've been drawing these circles with time. You know, we're well over 100 miles now. Look at the size of the tropical storm force winds. But look how this expanded, too. The actual hurricane force winds are now starting to extend further out from the center. So expanding that wind field. And if you take this forward, you can see how Florida will experience some of these winds with time. And that's what we're trying to focus on is this cone, not just the, the center part of this. So what happens? Let's, let's look at the timing here. So we have a major hurricane, 180 miles an hour. Um, this right here, 8 a.m. Monday. This is 8 a.m. Tuesday. Feeling the effects now, still going to feel the effects into Tuesday morning. Absolutely life-threatening, devastating um, uh, inf you know, information that we have concerning the Bahamas. Because if you look at this, they're going to experience uh, the rainfall. Could be 15 to 20, up to 30 inches of rain on, on these islands of the Bahamas. The storm surge, getting the latest values on the storm surge that, that we have, calculations 18 to 23 feet, and you can have waves on, on top of that. And the other part, all that water um, is a leading cause of fatalities in these storms on top of that, the major uh, hurricane force winds. So absolutely devastating, life-threatening situation in the Bahamas. So very slow mm -hmm. movement here. And if you notice, let's, let's move northward. Let's look at the timing. So we already talked about 8 a.m. Tuesday. There's 8 a.m. Wednesday, Thursday, and then into Friday. We're going to be dealing with this, this storm the entire week as it continues to move north. Here's what we got to talk about. we got some new updates in the watches and warnings. So let's, let's look at this cone. The cone is so important, and, and we keep we keep doing these interviews. We keep doing um, information like this, talking about it. It is so important not just to concentrate on this track. We keep seeing a lot of posts about, well, it's offshore. Well, you know, it looks like it's not coming here. We got to pay attention to this cone. This cone in includes the coastline of Florida, and if you keep going, the coastline portions of Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina as well. That means, if you look historically, the last five years of our air, this center could be anywhere in that cone. Okay, so solutions include our current track, maybe to the right. All right, it doesn't matter what this guy is saying. Um, okay, they say that this now is a Category 5, 180 mile per hour winds, and, well, 51 knots, 50 knots, 42 knots. 55 knots. Why don't we just put in 55 knots and see what the mileage, or the, the mileage, the miles per hour, 63. Something wrong with this picture. Yeah. So, you got your president lying, you got the National Hurricane Center lying, you got every freaking person lying. Oh, they're just lying. I can't stand living in this lying, meaningless world. Because that's what lies do. Renters everything meaningless. And those who accept the lies, those who support the liars, are just as bad as the liars. I'm sorry. If you didn't except the lies. The lies would go away. It's the acceptor that's the really dangerous 
human being there because their acceptance of the lies allow lies to just go on and on. And it allows the liars to continue lying. And then we're swamped in lies. And then, wow, life, hey, can't make sense of it. And everything's meaningless. And everything is about the liar's agenda. I don't like that. What is this? Ah, a storm expert's view. Dorian's damage remains impossible to predict. New York Times, today. Clear eye and near circular symmetry apparent in satellite images signify a ferocious storm on Friday. The computer models were in agreement on a landfall somewhere along Florida's east coast early next week. They said direct hit. Overnight, though, oh, Dorian continued its rapid intensification. The models blinked. Maybe you should have said the models winked. Ha <laughs> ha. We're winking at you. Fooled ya. Really? On Sunday, these models showed a similar range of outcomes. Landfall in Florida, Georgia, or the Carolinas. Notice how they say, or, well, wait, they omit Alabama, but not Trump. Um, Florida, Georgia, or the Carolinas, or, hmm, nowhere. Nowhere? On Sunday? That's today. On Sunday, the models, landfall in Florida, Georgia, or the Carolinas, or nowhere. Cool. And if Dorian does make landfall, its intensity at that point, whether it will still be a Category 5 or substantially weaker, is equally uncertain. Nearly the entire southeast coast of the United States, from South Florida through the Carolinas, is at risk. Yet in the end, perhaps most people in these places may well see little or no impact. Uh, cool. So, your Labor Day weekend, are you enjoying it so far? I swear, uh, so many of these events take place on three-day weekends. Isn't it interesting? It's like they want to destroy your little bitty vacation that's given to Americans. Frustratingly vague and ge generic. Yeah. So the National Hurricane Center advises that Florida residents should have their hurricane plan in place, know if they are in a hurricane evacuation zone, listen to advice given by local emergency officials, and that those in Georgia and the Carolinas should continue to monitor the progress of Dorian. Frustratingly vague, generic, can't seem to forecast anything, what's going on, who the hell knows? Can't meteorologists be more precise? Not really. The scientific information forecasters are charged with communicating is uncertain. Not because they are doing anything wrong, so don't get angry at your meteorologists who are lying to you 24-7. The information is inherently uncertain because of chaos, also known as the butterfly effect. Uncertainties will not go away until the future becomes the past. <laughs> okay, so until Hurricane Dorian smashes into your house, destroys everything that you own, we'll be certain. Really? Okie dokie. This is where we are now today. Um, you know, I keep thinking about Nixon bombing Cambodia. Actual bombs, you know? Now, I'm sure they would have meetings before they dropped the bombs, and some said, no, let's not do it. Others said, yes, let's do it. And then Nixon, uh, well, yeah, this is how, you know, the, the pretense goes. Nixon ordered the bombing of Cambodia. And boom, 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 people weren't warned. They're not dropping bombs, actual bombs on us. These are weather bombs. 
So I could imagine generals sitting around, you know, the heads of our military or uh, sitting around with Trump and, and uh, the hurricane, the National Hurricane Center, and they're all sitting around. And one says, let's just have Hurricane Dorian hit Florida. No, I don't want Florida to be hit. Let's drive it up the coast and hit Georgia and South Carolina and North Carolina. And they can't come to agreement, so they stall it out. Well, how, how do you, when man is controlling weather, this is what you're left with. You don't know what they have decided. They may have changed their mind. Or there might be two opposing forces here, one trying to save Florida and the other one trying to hit Florida. We don't know. But what we do know is that we are living in a war and they're using weather as a weapon. You know, I come over here, finally, Dorian is on radar, and she's mostly, I don't know, plasma, the blue. But you can only see a little bit of Dorian. Now people will say, because it's out of reach of radar. Bullshit. Yeah, <laughs> do you really think that we don't have radar to cover just, you know, well... We do. We do. I, 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 look, you know, when you are 24 7 coming across so many of your fellow Americans who can create delusions in their mind, and they must maintain those delusions because, well, it makes them live life more comfortably. And you're trying to get across the facts, the evidence of what is happening. You get a little like you've been doing this for years. You encounter them all the time. It, it, yeah, you begin to stutter. You begin to, you know, th there's an opposing force in your mind. You so want, because you know how important this information is, you so want to deliver it. But you, you want to deliver it to someone sane and rational and reasonable. They use reason. They still have those brain cells operating. And what you find is over and over and over again, you get charged with being a crazy nut job. Now, old hag. <laughs> wow, man. Things have changed. Now I'm an old hag who's just a crazy nut job. Okay, this is radar. Let's look at College of DuPage. Where is it? Where is it? Hurricane Dorian, where are you? Where are you? Well, let's go to, how about uh, satellite? Oh my God, there she is. There's Dorian spinning around and understand I am not making light of the damage that they may bring. Will it be a hurricane? Who knows? But look at that nice defined line right here. And they did, I did read a report that it was gonna stall over the Bahamas. Well, frequencies can get that to stall over the Bahamas. And you see the frequencies right here and you can see the microwaves operating if you look closely. I link below to everything. I'll link below to College of DuPage. You can go over, you can take a look at it. But this is being hit with electromagnetic frequencies and look 
look at that, well, I guess the New York Times said it was near perfect symmetry. This, ah, uh, boy, man, oh man, are we in trouble. You know, when everything becomes so obvious that something is very, very wrong and we face our fellow Americans who just want to go on living as they've always lived, you know, they want to be comfortable, they're all about themselves, um, that's when, hell, you can get your president saying anything. Ah, what the fuck, I'll throw in Alabama. Sorry for cursing. I'm really tired and I am, you know, uncertainties will not go away until the future becomes the past. Well, I guess when you don't know what the weather terrorists plan, and maybe we do have opposing forces at work, how is anybody to know? Until the moment hits. So, all right. Here it is, big and bold on satellite, but come to composite radar on College of DuPage and it's nowhere. But what you have is nanotechnology. The nano balloons. Yes, I have a video. Nanotechnology controlling our weather. Nano balloons. Do they need a hurricane to bring about massive flooding? No. Do they need a hurricane to bring about those, what they are claiming now in this invisible hurricane, it's 180 degree, uh, 180 miles per hour winds, it's category five. It's a category five. Really? 45 knots. Well, 55 is 63. I want to show you, or actually, I want you to listen to just a few minutes of one Pacific Redwood, Redwood his um, video that he posted on the 29th. And even before we get started, can you see the frequencies in these strands of manufactured clouds down here, the microwaves? The microwaves. Okay, let's go. Oh, I think it's too loud. Let's bring it down some. Now, as we look at Dorian, we see that uh, some interesting things. We see some strange evaporation patterns occurring right here along the northern edge. Take a look at this. And we also have some flat spots down here on the uh, center of the storm. Very interesting. The storm is being targeted. They're putting on a show. We see some icicle patterns right here on that system. That's Hurricane Dorian right there. And we see the blast patterns. But the interesting thing is we're seeing flat spots right here. As the loop progresses, we can see. And, and watch what happens again up here. The strange evaporation pattern. You see a dark area right here, right there. This is a dark area which is effectively steering the storm. Now the interesting thing is, if you look at the, if you look at the next uh, map here, this is the uh, water vapor map. This is all goes 16 of the material, by the way. This is the Gills uh, 16 upper level water vapor map. And we can see some interesting detail here. We also have right here a, a counterclockwise rotating air mass just adjacent to this hurricane right here. So we've got what appears to be some low pressure right adjacent to that hurricane. And we can see some moisture is condensation right in the middle of this separate counterclockwise spinning air mass right there. You see condensation as it moves in towards the vortex. 
Now, now on this view, we can see just a, just, just a, an eye wall that, that just stays there just for a brief, brief second, a brief a moment, moment there. So the, the storm, storm is being targeted, but it, it seems that uh, they're not using sufficient power. Now here is the uh, mid-level water vapor. We see some interesting detail here. The yellow is the uh, high pressure we can see over here over California. We've got constant high pressure, which is locking all the water systems off the Pacific up here. So the yellow is high pressure. Notice, notice the high pressure up in this area. And right between, right on top of this uh, area here, we've got high pressure, higher pressure down here. And we see these flat spots, the strange evaporation patterns along the system. So this system, in my opinion, is it being steered? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. High pressure, low pressure, air masses, jet stream, and weather. Hurricanes, tornadoes, hail, fog, rain, torrential rain, flash flooding. It is all manufactured by man. Now, this is a document that I have read into uh, a video. Let me pause you and bring that video up. This uh, video I will link to below. Nanotechnology is controlling weather. You just need a military officer's command. This was based on this operational defenses through weather control in 2030 United States Air Force the date the date of this 10 years ago 10 years ago and do you think that they've perfected perfected the use of nanotechnology and artificial intelligence well let's see this is an excerpt from that military document that states making the high or low pressure area can be as simple as heating or cooling a massive column of air with diamond balloons. The diamond balloons, well, watch that video. Um, you know, it, it's, <laughs> what, what, what you going to do? What, what are you going to do? What are we going to do? The future of nanotechnology will enable creation of stratus cloud formations. Advances in technology are beginning to bring weather phenomena more completely under our control. Greatly increased computing power and miniaturized delivery systems will allow us to create specific perturbations in local atmospheric conditions. These perturbations allow for the immediate and persistent ability to create localized fog or stratus cloud formations. So you got those nano balloons that create the cloud. You got those trillion watt lasers that bring down the torrential rain. <sighs> yes. Actually creating, not modifying weather. The military uses of controlling the weather are vast and future technology will enable more specific control of the weather actually creating it, not modifying it. Very interesting. Very interesting document. It's a weather control system. So, um, I also want to just read one page of an operational analysis for Air Force 2025. We are living on a military planet, on a military, it's, it's military. Everything's force, police force, military force all over the world. Have you noticed what's going on in Hong Kong with the Chinese military? Um, bringing those Hong Kong protesters down to their knees, submit ordinary people. What's happening with Israel? Netanyahu actually confirms they bombed Iran. Now they're at war with Hezbollah. 
They're at war with an organization they created. God, I so want Americans to flip that switch and just go back to like, hey, we gotta, we gotta learn what's happening in our world because, because we care. Oh, please care. Please care. Because actual care, genuine care, it motivates people. And when they don't have it, their only motivation, uh, motivation, man, oh man, Carol, motivation is about themselves and themselves only. Weather analysis and modification system, brief description, a global network of sensors. And this document talks about all these sensors Enabled sensors and networks answer the problems of measuring, altering, and communicating the variables within a weather system. The delivery of these systems can be accomplished with current technology in 2009. The center of this weather control system revolves around a formation of diamond nano-skinned balloons encasing a host of nano-machines. So, a global network of sensors provides weather warriors with the means to monitor and accurately predict weather activities and their effects on military operations. It's a diverse set of weather modification tools that allows manipulation of small to medium scale weather phenomena to enhance friendly force capabilities and degrade those of the adversary. Capabilities, understanding and predicting local weather effects, predicting. With the technology that we have, it should have made our predictions more precise. Instead, we've got that prestigious publication, the New York Times, claiming we can't predict anything anymore. Ah, great. We will only know when the future is the past. Precipitation inducement or suppression using particulate seeding or directed energy, those trillion watt lasers. Fog generation or dissipation using directed energy techniques, storm triggering or enhancement using airborne, airborne cloud seeding, high power microwave devices, ionospheric mirrors for communications and ra radar enhancement. Radar enhancement, wow. So we got the radar enhancement. We've got a plasma, half a plasma hurricane on that radar and no hurricane on this radar. But we've got the nano skin balloons popping up. Yeah, okay. Link. Links to everything are below. College of DuPage, meteorology, severe weather and flash, flood warnings. Indeed, they updated September 1, New Orleans. Storm warning, thunderstorm warning. September 1, well, you got Wilmington, Ohio, Lincoln, Illinois, flood warnings. St. Louis, Missouri, Lincoln, Illinois, uh, Amarillo, Texas, all today, but early this morning. Um, all right. Okay, so let's do this. Uh, severe thunderstorm warning, New Orleans, 1137 a.m., September 1. And, well, I guess, did you get a severe thunderstorm that was created for you? New Orleans, maybe so. This was at just after midnight last night. Nothing but a whole lot of radar pulsing. Nothing. Okay. And let's do this. You know... Here, we've got 12.36 a.m., September 1, Amarillo, Texas. 
severe thunderstorm warning and this was just after midnight so you're a, what two hours uh, behind so this is about 10 o'clock at night right right yes look at this wow and look at that pulse man it's pulsing right out pulsing that thunderstorm right out kick it watch this boom boom you do see that right you see it boom it's cutting it's it's literally forcing it at great speed right to the Amarillo area and what do we have well Amarillo Texas Doppler radar detected half dollar size hail hail and NBC weather and this is Amarillo More, More than, than a foot, foot of rain, rain triggering flash floods, floods submerging vast areas along Interstate 2 from, from McAllen to Mercedes, Texas. Texas. Yes, we woke up, it was around 3 in the morning, and we, and we saw, saw outside, everything was bloody, everything. 85-year-old Francisco Ramirez, a longtime resident of Westlaco, says she's never seen it like this. It's raining, 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 it's well, you're, you're in good hands now. now. You're in good hands now. You're ready. Thank you so much. Thank you. Wait a second. Overwhelmed first responders. Hang on, guys. Volunteer. I said wait a second because that older woman I remember seeing a couple of months ago, parts of Texas submerged after heavy rain triggers flash floods. 18 hours ago posted NBC News. Um, this is the link. All right, you guys. McAllen. Where's McAllen? Hang on. Well, yet another example of how we really do need to pay attention. Um, it's, it's outrageous that that is listed 18 hours ago, and this is not the Amarillo area. So I apologize for that. This did take place several months ago. And there's no friggin' date on it. This is such irresponsible reporting. Um, I, I don't get it. But that hail last night, Amarillo, two hours. The entire storm produced hail for two hours. All right, guys, look, we're living a time where it's getting to the truth. Yeah, it is an exhausting adventure.